Right. Uh, it is a beautiful, perfect day here in Arizona. I'm going to make sure all my cameras are up and I have my feeds up. So just everybody give me two, two minutes of grace here while I do this. Um, I hope everybody had a great day. Today was a down day for me here in the Valley. I'm here teaching this week. I taught Monday, Tuesday, and then Thursday, Friday. So today was kind of my last day off before I head back up to the Pacific Northwest, and it was glorious. We are talking, it is 85 outside. The sun is warm. I'm getting lots of vitamin D on my head. Thank goodness. <laughs> it's one of the reasons why I will continue to make it a priority to come down here in the wintertime, because us Pacific Northwest girls, we need some sun on our heads, natural sun, not the kind we take in the form of vitamin. Okay, everybody's on. Let me just say hi uh, to a couple friends and then we're gonna get started. We're gonna talk about the buttonholer attachment tonight. I have a very special guest joining me, Alicia and her um, handsome husband, Stephen, is joining us. <laughs> she just heard me say that, but you guys don't see her yet. Um, okay, let me say hi to my friends, and then we'll bring Alicia on. Uh, Anna Lewis, hello. Thank you for joining us. Debbie Sinclair, thank you for your email today. Actually, I, I borrowed your picture so we can talk about the differences. Alicia's going to talk about the differences, so you might see, recognize your camera work tonight. Becky's on from Kenny Dale. Hello. Nancy's on from Beautiful Lake Stevens. Linda's on from Texas, and Franny is on. Hi, Franny and Mary. Mary, if you're in the background. Oh, and Mel and Joe are on. Hi, guys. I've missed you. I know you had some stuff going on with your family, but I'm super glad you're able to join me tonight. And then we have Sunny. Sunny, I've missed you. Where have you been? Madeline is on from San Diego. Hi, friend. I hope your machine is running well after our spa day a few weeks ago. All right. Well, I think we're going to get started. Jeanette is here. Oh my gosh, I just have to tell everybody real quick, Jeanette is a friend of mine from uh, Smash, which is an area that I live in in the Northwest, and she was, Gladys is her pre-war machine, and Gladys was um, having some issues, like tension problems that looked tension-y. Oh no, Jeanette did an entire fuzzy quilt on her and pulled an entire dust bunny out of behind the assembly, and all of a sudden, Gladys is stitching well. Isn't that amazing? Jeanette, I'm going to confiscate that machine. <laughs> if you can't take care of her, I'm going to confiscate her. <laughs> oh, my gosh, so many people. Hello, Margaret from, from Surprise, Arizona. Um, oh, Mary's at work. Darn. Okay, Beth saw it, and Soshi. Hi, Soshi. And Missy is on from Redmond. Okay, let's bring my friend. Let me just give her a grand introduction. So Alicia and I have been fast friends for about a year or two. She is another featherweight um, uh, enthusiast like I am, runs a business, does amazing restoration work. Her husband, Stephen, um, when she commissions his help, works alongside of her. And she is... She was joined us last week also in discussing the zigzag attachment. And tonight she is back for Attachment Wednesdays to talk about the buttonholer. So yay, everybody give Alicia a big round of applause. And let's welcome her. Hey, Come everybody. On, All righty. So I have pulled Steven on this week. He loves the video. Ah! <laughs> Him and my husband, Andy, they're two peas in a pod. <laughs> <laughs> um, so yeah, like what Darlene was saying, we are like your mom and pop little store here. And so anything mechanical, I'm not really a mechanically inclined person. So that's where he comes into play. Most of our troubleshooting, um, goes directly to him. Uh, Debbie actually sent us the, the picture as well, which is why I had asked if you had it in the screen that we could pull up because I was actually sitting in the UPS parking lot and I pulled it up and he's over there like, oh, it blah, 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 blah. And I was like, well, I'm not gonna be able to type that up in an email. So we'll just have <laughs> you on. Why not? <laughs> we'll just have you on tonight. And then that way he can actually kind of explain a little bit of the mechanics of it. Cause that's basically what it is. It's the mechanics of the button holders that make the difference. And it, you know, you can get really excited, like, oh, I got this buttonholer, and then go home. And if it's not 
fitting the machine the way it's supposed to, it can kind of be, well, you know, a real disappointment. So well, help frustrating. Can help with that. Frustrating yeah. for sure. I brought my buttonholer out here. You can see here. So look at me. I'm so ready for class instructor. I have my little piece <laughs> of fabric. I've got my pen to write what everything is. And I have my buttonholer and my cams all ready to go. You got your second little stack of cams too? No, I'm in, I'm in Arizona. So I'm actually technically, this is mom's. Okay. Well, I guess we'll just get started on that. Um, Steven's going to be running back and forth because our kids are in the bathtub to try to keep them quiet. Please uh, keep them afloat. Keep them afloat, <laughs> exactly. So as we were talking, there are two different variants. We'll just start with that. As you can see, Darlene and I both have the green plastic box here. Yeah, let us there know is... what you want us to me to throw the picture up because Ray will throw the slide Okay. Up. Um, you want her to do it right now? You know what? Steven's back. So let's go ahead and throw that picture up there because there is a maroon box. So as you can see, there's two different types of attachments there. So Steven, I know that, here, let me scoot this to you because of your what? It's a very bad small eyesight. Screen. Well, yeah, okay. very small screen. So basically there are what I call the duck beak on there. So this is the 221. Alligator mouth. Alligator mouth that works too. So the 221 is on the green box and the one that would fit what is would be like your 301 the slant shank machine is on the red box. So why don't you talk a little bit about the, the shape of the alligator teeth is specific to the type of machine because it allows a full cycle of the gears. So because the the button holder in the red box has a steeper angle if you put it on a straight shank machine you might not get the full actuation around the gear Actu actuation that's a pretty big word uh -huh. i don't know if we can do that uh <laughs> i don't know how to say it the other way it won't cycle completely okay that i get not an engineer okay i know that. right sometimes i'm just sitting here like um <laughs> layman's turns I know. Can you talk to me like you're talking to a kindergartner, please? <laughs> we'll try. So, you know, so when you're looking at that, you saw that the 221 actually was, it extended out longer. And the other reason is because your needle is straight, whereas the other one was kind of squished. If you saw it was kind of squished together. And that's because the actual slant shank is actually angled back. So that will make a huge difference. Obviously, they're not going to be interchangeable, and you're not going to be able to use a slant shank button holder on your straight shank machine. Um, and you can use this. This button holder is not just for the Singer 221. It's like any of the other attachments that we showcase. They're going to fit on any of the low shank Singer machines as well. Okay. Okay, great. Can yeah. I ask a question, like a dumb question? Do I need to you? Okay, so I have like I rebel I, with this metal plate because I've seen too many machines scratched. So you do have I to have to use this metal plate or can I just put the feed dogs in dead center so they're going up and down and not pushing back? As far as I know of, from what I gathered with that, because I was like you, I didn't really want to put something in, in the bed mm -hmm. of my machine. Right. Honestly, the screw does not go that far into the bed of the machine and you don't have to crank it down. So that's my main thing is with this, I'm not really sure how it would work with the dead and center because I do think that it needs that soft, not soft, but that slick surface on okay. top to help guide the um, fabric back and forth. It's also blocking your feed dogs, so well, that way it doesn't. She puts something over top of hers to kind of. I use painters she... tape, but I, I'll I'll play the game here. I just I know Alicia and I are kind of anti these plates because we just have seen too many machines damaged by them sliding out. But I'll, I'll play the game. So let's. So me... anything. So with this, yeah, that's you brought up a really good point. So if you choose to use your button holder, which I do encourage everyone to use their attachments by all means, especially because with this, you can actually get into monogramming and embroidery, which is something that I want to do futuristically. 
you do not have to crank this down at all. It just needs to slightly cover. I mean, you're going to notice that even when it's down there, it's still going to move up and down slightly. It does not need to be snug. Snug is all it needs to be. If right. you really crank on it, you could strip out the threads because it is aluminum. It's not like okay. through so it's steel. Not, it's not holding the machine together. That's what I tell people in classes right. about over-tightening screws. Yeah, exactly. So, um, that, that yeah, so you do need to use that particular feed dog cover with that. The other thing is, is I actually made a template per the request of the owner's manual. And I have all of the different cams. So this thing came with nine cams, which includes the four cams in this cute little Singer template box. Okay. And here they are. So you've got like a one and one sixteenth, which is what I've got in there now. And it comes in a straight and a keyhole. And I found out what the keyhole was about. The keyhole, everybody, and the reason why you would do a keyhole buttonhole is so that way, if you have a real thick um, this is the keyhole. If you have a real thick button, it helps to create enough space for you to get that button in there. So you have the one and one sixteenth, the five eighths, a five eighth keel, a five eighth straight. You have the three eighths, the five five sixteenths, the half, the fifteen sixteenths, and the thirteen sixteenths. Okay. So today, I popped in the. Um, one and one sixteenth because it's going to be a longer, uh, so okay. you can actually see it really well. I have that but one on too. on the back of these cams, when you're using them, so the cam looks like this. And if you pop yours open and you can actually face it out, you can show everyone. Because mine's attached to the machine and it's a pain in the butt too. So that little hole there is where you're going to actually this insert goes in here. the cam. In. Yep. You're going to insert the cam in there. Th this is the only downfall to this attachment is... If you want to switch to a different different cam, you okay. have to take the whole thing off of your machine. Yeah, that is a bummer. It's not like the zigzagger where you could just change it from the top down. Right. Now, Singer came out with the professional button puller, I think in the 70s is what I read. And that okay. one actually has cams that drop down oh, into okay. it. Okay. So that was kind of a bummer. I'm just like, you did it for the zigzagger. Why couldn't we have done it for the button holder? But you know, potato, potato, <laughs> right? Right. Um, Can't get everything we want. Right. So on the back of these cams too, there is a line and I don't know how well you can see that, but there is a faint line and it tells you what the um, length is. And what they recommended if you were to use this for putting a buttonhole in a garment, Mm -hmm. was you stick your button and see if it would, you know, a, that line would kind of be your gauge to let you know whether or not the button was going to be too snug or too loose or just the right fit. So that was kind of okay. cool. Okay. All right. So, because yours is already on, let me just ask, does this load just like the zigzagger from the back with the duck bill or alligator mouth going up over the needle changer? Correct. Okay. And you're going to want that, that big, thick screw too. If you want to show everyone what that looks like when you get a oh, second. Oh, that big. So what screw do we use? Thank you for asking, <laughs> for saying that. What screw do we use to attach it to the bed of the machine? So I'm going to find that I'm going to flip open to the proper name of this. Okay. It is called the slotted clamping screw. Okay. And it is the one that comes inside the kit. Yes, that one goes, that one holds it onto the shaft, not the plate onto the bed. Correct. Correct. Yes, that is, that's, that's a very good point. Okay. Yes. And, and you need that screw for this thing to work. Again, your regular thumb screw is going to be too small to actually fit in to the shaft and hold it securely. Okay. I would have figured that out pretty quick here. I have my mom's 222 up tonight. And, oh, shoot. I'm having a little trouble. I wonder if there's something. And oh, I see the problem. I earlier, so that's why I attached mine ahead of time, boys and girls, because it is not, it, it takes a little bit of finagling to get it to 
it, it's not hard. I don't want to say that it's hard. It's and not hard. it won't go on with your original thread cutter. I just had to take her thread cutter off to get oh, it you off. you did? Okay. See, I took Clickety's thread cutter off a few years ago because oh, I couldn't fit another attachment on there. So I too. forgot all about that. Me Good too. Point. So this is mom's trying really hard to be careful because I do not want to scratch her to do <laughs> You definitely don't want to scratch it on your show either. She could be watching. She's right in the other room. She'll come in here and murder me for all to see, I can assure you. <laughs> What's going on? I can't get it on. You kind of have to fiddle with that, um, the alligator mouth or the duck beak, whatever you... It, it. Let me grab yep. a different one. Okay. I'm wondering if something's wrong with that one because the more I move the little arm, it's not... What was okay. the word Stephen used? Actuating. It's not actuating. We can add that in a repertoire of words. Kathy wants to see Cycling. the machine while Cycling. I'm attaching. Better. Okay. Thanks. Someone wants to see the machine. And the, as soon as I get it on, Kathy, I'll show you what it looks like. Or Alicia, can you? Oh, see, yeah. it wasn't working, you guys. Yep. We can totally do that. Let me pull this off here. And I will flip it around. Okay. So... This is Clickety, my 39. He's kind of my buddy whenever I start doing any type of sewing. And so as you can see, the duck beak or the alligator mouth goes up over top of, let me see if I turn that off. So it's there probably so is an actual term and Steven is totally laughing at us for renaming it. Well, you know what? That's what I got this manual for. I'm gonna look in this manual. It'll probably tell me in this manual. I just try to... Come on, alligator. <laughs> G. Oh, it's the fork arm. Told you fork this morning. Arm. Thought it was something with forks. Fork arm. Yeah. All right. So then this is right here. This is the screw that we were talking about. It's a pretty beefy screw. When you're looking at it. But if you look at where it hooks on to the actual needle bar, there's it, it's pretty beefy. So that's what I was saying. Like it's not your little thumb screw here is not going to be able to hold that on there. So when you are shopping around for this attachment, just make sure that that screws in there. Um, Darlene, do you carry like if someone was missing this screw? We carry complete sets. And honestly, I probably have some incomplete sets that I have parts for. So you could okay. contact me at the shop. No problem. Okay. So that's good to know. So that's good for a good resource just because I do know that there are some times that these are sold and people think they, they have a complete set and it's missing this. I make sure that ours are complete before we sell them. So, yeah. but, but because of that, I have a bunch that aren't. So I probably have part, I mean, I probably could build entire new sets with all my extra parts. Yeah, you probably could. <laughs> good point. All right. Now, just before we get too far along, I just wanted to make a point to everybody. There are oiling points in here. Um, and also more specifically, there are specific spots on here for motor lubricant, believe it or not. And you're going to want to undo this screw here. And this what looks like, a, this is called the adjusting knob. And we'll be using that this evening too. But you will take off this housing. You can see it perfectly. And underneath this housing, there is the mechanics of the... Um, there is nothing that she's missing buttonholer okay um, and it is that there are oiling points on page 30 if you have the manual that looks like this one i'm i'm literally looking at it right now okay so page 30 you said yeah oh look at that lubricating your attachment now i see it because it's a gear that's why it's grease look at that. yep Okay. And there's more grease attack, more grease parts on here than oiling parts, which I was like, of course there are. Cause then I had to pull out all of my motive, you know what I mean? As I was doing this, but I did freshly oil and grease this for today. And I gave Clickety some more oil today too. <laughs> <laughs> all right. So in getting started here, um, and of course, Steven walked away at the most critical portion. All right. So if you were doing a button, let's just put it this way. And I like this little fabric. I use the other side of it because it has lines on it. Okay. So if you were doing a button, what you would end up doing is you would mark 
how large your button is on here. You would use like either a chalk or a fabric pencil. Um, yeah, I or... saw that in the instructions. Yes. Yep. So, so she, what she's on... talking about, folks, is the page six and seven on the manual. This is where you are going to actually line your button up and then, uh, cause you'll use your, they want you to sew this guide like Alicia has. So you can know what yes. size each of these little cams are in advance. Yes. Very genius so, singer, very genius. <laughs> right, exactly. <laughs> I'm just gonna pretend like one of these little dotted lines here is my line that I drew. So I'm gonna okay. hand this actually to Steven as I place this under here. So. When you thread your machine, you want to make sure that you've got the thread, that you can hold the thread coming off of the needle. The one from the bobbin case, we're actually going to pull up up um, through the fabric. So we're going to lift our fabric in there. And you want to actually turn your knob. And you're going to push this all the way forward towards you. So once it's there, and then you can put your presser foot down. Okay. As you can see, I've got my little lines here. What we're gonna yeah. do next is we're gonna pull up the bobbin thread. So I like to have, well, I did until my kids came over here. My little, my little, do you see my little? Thread is down. No, my scissors. My children have come the over sharp here. Ones. Yeah, my little miniature scissors. Here you go, here's some scissors. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks, someday Charlie. we'll be in the same room, Alicia, someday. I, I think so. We have to be. It would be a lot of, a lot more fun. I agree. Alicia would not be forgetting things right now. So I'm going to grab. I'm going to need those little scissors, though. Grab this. You should let the kids have them. I don't. They'll come over and take <laughs> my stuff. All right. Stephen, so is that really it? a helpful comment, really, right at this moment? It's really not. I thought it was. It's really not. <laughs> <Don't, I'm not laughs> nice. You just wait till we get off this camera. Um, so you're gonna hold these two threads. I'll be doing marital counseling later on YouTube. <laughs> Is it optional or do we have to go? For you, you have to. <laughs> oh, okay. All right, so you're gonna use your adjusting knob again and you're going to actually now pull your fabric to where your little, um, there's another critical name for this. Hold on. Hold oh, on. I see it. It's moving it, the fabric to the top of the thing. Yes. This little thing that's in front of it is the stripper foot. So this stripper foot, you're going to want it to be like right by line Where number you start four. your line. Yep. Well, line okay. number four. Okay. So you can see it's, it's basically in the middle. Right. I, so, mine's in the same position, girl. I am following you. All right. So now we can start stitching oh one more thing let's look over here this little guy here this little knob here is actually going to adjust and i've i've got this from this morning so okay. it's actually going to adjust the width of the stitch so this right here is when i stuck the blight which is what this is right in the middle okay it was actually actually it's this one this was all the way to six Yes. And then I did a more narrow one, which is all the way to one. So these, those different numbers on the side here actually adjust. This is the exact same cam, oh. three different sizes. That's awesome. Okay. All right. So I've I got mine works. set on like three. So okay. I'm going to go over here. I'm just going to hold these little um, tail, this little thread tail here. Okay. I'm going to do the same thing. All right. I go around Ooh. twice. To just really make that a nice dark stitch and to kind of like really through that buttonhole. twice <laughs> no i just did once look how cool it looks you guys now i've got dark thread on top and then white thread on the bottom so you can see a little bit of um you know the bobbin coming up but that's dang good 
I'm going to grab myself another pair of scissors because I can't find my little one. Micah, you my have to hurt mom. mommy's scissors back. <laughs> oh gosh, they're like always in my sewing stuff. I'm like, um. My kids uh, know better. I would murder them. Ta-da. And then, like I said, we can mess with the blight here and we can change that. The other thing I will say, when you pull your thread out, you want to make sure that if you're going to do another buttonhole, that you have the thread, at least for the needle portion, up from underneath this guy, because once it gets caught under there, yeah. it's just not, it's very difficult to. Well, us quilters are very accustomed to bringing our bobbin thread up to the top of our projects and holding threads. So Right. Or we should be, right, girls? Right? <laughs> <laughs> There's always one bad egg, right? <laughs> well, if I know tomorrow, they'll probably be in my class. <laughs> I'm teaching a machine quilting class tomorrow. Of various skill levels, I'm a little nervous about it. Oh, boy. You know there's going to be someone who's going to be like, I made my first top next week. What's this quilt as you go thing? And I'm going to be like, oh, goodness gracious. <laughs> I'm not going to lie. I think I was one of the ones on your YouTube channel where I said, what is this quilt as you go? Like, what is that? <laughs> because I've yes. never done something like that before. So that would be. Yeah. You know, I'm looking, I'm actually really looking forward to it. I think everybody's going to get way more than they bargained for. Um, I have a question from Cindy and Jen. Hi guys. In Michigan. Would you use the wider blight for thicker fabrics? You know, I'm not 100% sure. This manual, I think, talks a little bit more on, like, proper, um, let me see if I can find it. So, like, adjust, adjusting the attachment for the width of the blight. I okay. would say, honestly, by looking at that, yes. If you had a really thick button, too, and you were kind of going over some really thick fabric, mm -hmm. it, it's more, the more narrow it is, the slimmer and the harder it's going to be. And I would think that if you're going over some sort of like really thick fabric, you would probably want to adjust it to as wide as you possibly can. Yeah, so I agree with you. have enough space in there. Just to make sure that you can get your button through and have a nice solid slit with your seam ripper too. Right, exactly. Yeah. Yeah. I don't I don't do buttonholes because quilters don't need buttonholes, but in the event that I ever wanted to do one, I am super happy that I now have some confidence in using this thing. I mean, it's really not, it, I think that that's just it is that these attachments were really intimidating to me when I first got, I like, I started collecting them just because I like all the vintage stuff. That's just kind of like who I am. I like the, just all of the stuff that goes around encompassing this time period. And I will say that when I saw this contraption and I started looking at it, I'm like, I will just add it to my shelf of pretty attachments. I will adorn it on my wall and everyone can see it when they come in, but don't ask me how to use it. And I think that that's kind of the problem is that what's the point of having it if you don't know how to use it? Like you may, you may be a quilter and you may not use it on a daily basis, but now you have the confidence of at least when you get it out and you put it on your machine, it's not right. intimidating of like, what do I do with this? Yeah, I have, so we had some interesting comments. Um, so Sharon Tree is a buddy of mine from Eastern Washington, Yakima. She said, I sew clothes, always make a test hole on scrap first. That's a really good suggestion. And then Sandy Martin, my buddy, um, says you can make decorative ones too, decorative buttonholes. So like, have you seen that um, advent calendar, that Christmas advent calendar that actually is stitched with buttonholes? So now you could do that on your featherweight and not have to use your modern machine. I've never seen that. I'll have to look that up. Yeah, it's you you do like little ornaments for trees and it's an advent calendar and you have a button where the ornament will go on that day and then you stitch separate little okay. ornaments and you put them on the button. So that Kathy cute. Kathy Hager wants to know will some uh, of the more modern singer button 
will some of the more modern buttonhole attachments. I've got several in a different collection I got from my mom. Oop, I don't understand that question, Kathy. I think you may have mistyped something. Uh, Carmen says, so the buttonholer can also be used for embroidery somehow. How can that be used for embroidery? Like different so if you hands? look on your manual here, and that's what I want to learn. That's my next goal. Um, you can do monogramming and embroidery. It's on page 24. Oh, good call. And how you basically would do this is you would stitch along and then you would have to stop put your needle down and adjust the fabric. I haven't quite figured it out and there is a science to it. Um, I've just, we've just now got through making buttonholes. So you That's know, one so step cool. at a time. So I really do want to do this because yeah, people have done lettering on it. Um, they have put like an edge around like a, like a handkerchief. So. Oh, wow. I that oh, be. I see it as an example here on the, page 25. Yeah. That's cool. So, um, the next, next week, because of all the mask making and the pandemic, um, we have had many requests for the multi-slotted, uh, bias binder, um, for uh, the next demonstration. Do you have one of those, my friend? I think I do. Let me look up here. It's the long skinny one with the slots in it. I've used a bias binder when I put bias around a, um, Oh, Kathy wants to know if they'll, yes, Kathy, this is the button holder for the two, two, one. So yes, it'll work on the two, two, one. We think because it's in the manual. So it must work on the two, two, one. And I've got like boxes of different attachments that go to different machines. I know that I have this one. I don't think it's the multi-slotted one, though. Well, the bias binder, it's the same thing. I mean, the bias binder, it's just the slot. It doesn't have the slots to slide through. Yeah. I thought I did. But it doesn't look like I do. I just okay. have... But I can look at my extra parts because... Yeah, that'll work. That'll work. It just doesn't have the longer piece. Yep. Yeah, I did this one and I put um, bias around uh, placemats. Oh, so yeah. Actually, it actually had batting in the middle, too. Oh, cool. Okay. Oh, nice. Okay. I'm, I also decided, because you were gracious enough to give me three weeks of... Um, of Attachment Wednesdays, I decided I was going to pull out that really rare attachment, that embroidery attachment for the fourth week. Fun. I'm excited about it. Very cool. It will teach me something that I don't have and that I want to get, but I probably will never find. Yeah, I, they, <laughs> I can't believe I had one. In, it, it was in this little crazy suitcase that I got as part of a big lot of machines I bought and I didn't even know I had it until I pulled it out a few weeks ago. So pretty fun. Someone said, oh, can, Sandy wants to say, can we see that again? Oh, Sandy Reese. Um, she's asking about the bias binder. Can you show that on camera one more time, Alicia? And I'll actually see if I can get my hands on a multi, because now the fact that I don't have it. Well, I can send you one. I mean, I have them. <laughs> Carmen, while you're showing that, Carmen wants to know, so the eyelet cam, is that specific to the button holder? I think so. Yes. Yes. Now the eyelet cam is rare the really find. rare one, right? The circle. Another one that I don't have that I kind of want. Yeah, I should probably look through my things. I wonder if I have one. Yeah. Yeah. That one is, it is um, harder to find. So if you've got your hands on one, make sure you keep your hands on it. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> <laughs> well, thank you, you guys, for joining me and doing a demo and telling us what you've learned and, uh, you know, trying all this stuff out. Uh, I really appreciate it. You are a delight and I super appreciate your 
handsome assistant behind you coming over and lending a hand also. <laughs> no, thank you so much for having me on here. I love doing this. This is so much fun. I get to hang out with you. I know. Talk about attachments and featherweights and sewing. And I learned something new too. So well, I appreciate fun. it. This well, we'll fun. have to, we'll have to come up with some more collaborative efforts. So I think so. We I'll totally come to your do. station next time. Sounds good. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks, guys. You're delightful. I hope you have a great evening. You too. See y'all later. See you.